So now I'm going to discuss the generalized delta rule. Um, and this is basically the learning rule that we need to train multi-layer networks. We're just going to consider a two-layer network here. So let's think about a multi-layer network. Um, in this case, one hidden layer and a linear, a non-linear output. So we label the important parts. Obviously, we've got um, two inputs in this particular case. We've got weights in the first layer, W1, weights in the second layer, W2. And what we do, first of all, when we're calculating the forward part of this, is we apply the input, the X, um, and then we generate the output from the first uh, linear layer, um, which we call net2 in this particular case. And then we pass, for each <coughs> output element-wise, we pass that through um, a non-linearity, which is in this case a sigmoid. So we start off with the with the net2 values, and we tra non-linearly transform to the a2 activation values, which is the output from the first layer completely. We then proceed and calculate um, the linear combination arising from the second layer, which we call net3. And this is then passed through the nonlinearity sigmoid, generating um, an activation A3. And A3 is also the overall output of the network in this case. So training then, <clears throat> just like we did with gradient descent for um, regression and for a single layer network, involves um, basically applying the data, um, calculating the error gradients with respect to the weights, and updating the weights. So what we have to do to do that is basically, um, first of all, do a forward phase of the network. So we apply the data, generate the output, um, computate, uh, so, sorry, compute the error, and then back propagate the error. Um, so we can then estimate what the gradients are in, the, in layer W2 and then also in layer W1 and appropriately adjust um, their values. So when we're actually updating the weights, we can either do that in terms of um, what's called a, um, a sample by sample process, which is basically means you just give it one pattern, calculate the corresponding weight changes need and just do them after each presentation. And that's called stochastic learning. We can also though, if we wanted to, um, X um, could also be the entire data set that we could apply all at one go. And we can do that quite easily in MATLAB. And what will happen is we'll calculate um, the error gradients across the entire data set, if we do that, and we can do an update in that way. So let's look at training in a nutshell. Then the first thing we do, step by step, apply the inputs um, and outputs. Propagate forward, um, we get the output, and then we calculate the error between the target for that particular pattern and the output. We then calculate um, the error gradient, um, with respect to W2, and then update W2. We then back propagate the error, because now we've got to get back so we can actually um, affect layer W1 weights. We calculate the gradient, um, the error gradient with respect to W1, and then we update the weights W1. So here we're gonna only consider stochastic training, so we're gonna look at how we do this when we apply one pattern, we generate one output, um, and then we deal with it in that way. So we're going to just look at it in terms of a single input vector X and a single output target O. So basically, to achieve gradient descent in layer 2, that's the W2 weights, we need to compute DE, DW2. Right? In this particular instance, <clears throat> what we see is we've got three weights, one, two, three in W2, therefore DE, DW2 is going to be um, uh, basically a vector with three elements in it, right? So it's going to be um, the same form as the weight vector W2. So we've got basically this uh, row vector with three elements in it, um, and each element corresponds to one of the weights, right? So the inputs going into um, the final network here, right, correspond to the outputs coming from the first net uh, from the first network. So in this case, we see we've got one, two, three uh, values coming out of the first lower network, 
which we're representing by A2, and we can represent those by um, their three elements. And we're going to adjust, basically, first of all, the weights in W2. And that's very easy to do. And the reason it's easy to do is it's just like we've been doing before with a single um, linear network. The only difference is we're not now considering um, the X data coming in directly. We're now just looking at um, the activations from the network below and using them as a, the effective input to the, to, to the second network. Right? So we, just, we can just update, um, use the update rule just like we did before, but we're not using the X. We wouldn't be using X transpose, we're using A2 transpose. So, presentation um, of data X, obviously, will, will lead to um, activations A2. That's, that's, that's obvious here, so we get these activations A2, and that's quite easy to compute because, first of all, um, presentation of X generates the net output, and then it's got to be nonlinear transformed. So the net output from the first, due to the first layer, is just W1X, right? That's just what we had before for the linear network. And then all we have to do is transform um, on an element by element basis, that's very important, um, the values of, of the net vector in order to get the A2 vector. Right. Now, if we want to, uh, we can also uh, put on a bias term as well when we're doing all of this. So the output of, of network three then, basically, um, is due to the input going in, which is A2 from the layer below, right? So we've got A2 is now the effective input to this to this, this upper network. So in other words, net three, that's the linear part of the up, upper network, is just given by W2, A2, and the overall activations coming out are going to be uh, one divided by one plus E to the minus net three, right? where this again is element-wise. That gives the overall output of the network. And what we'll do then, this is just the forward pass, we then need to compare that output with the target value that we've got in order to generate um, an error. And of course, we'd normally do that with, uh, we then square it, so we've got a squared error so term. So E equals T minus O squared. <coughs> So now let's think about how we're going to train the output layer W2. And like I said, this is actually exactly the same as training a linear network. It's just now we've got the input coming from the other network below rather than directly from X. So let's go through it step by step again. We define the error. Um, in fact, we're just doing it all in terms of single presentation errors this time. So we've got, we're defining an error as target takeaway output squared, and we've just got an arbitrary half factor to make the maths a little bit simpler later on. So what we need to do now is we're going to have to work out how error changes with W2. So we have to, do, we have to basically calculate DE DW2. So let's split this expression up first of all. We can see that this is an expression with one term and um, what the one function basically is T minus O and we're squaring it. So it's a function of a function. So let's split it up using the chain rule again. Um, we can write it as u equals t minus o and e equals half u squared. Computing the gradient, right, the error gradient with respect to the weights is quite easy. To start, like I said, we're doing output weight w2, so we're just looking at the upper part. So de dw2 is quite easy to calculate, right? We've got, we've got, the, t we've got the error expression here. We just have to differentiate this with respect to w2. So it's going to be basically half u squared differentiated and we can use the chain rule so we've already put the uh, the u intermediate variable in there so de dw2 equals d d d u d u d w2 so that's nice and easy we can differentiate e with respect to u easily so half times 2u is u um, which is then t minus o and d u d w2 Again, we look at this expression and we notice again that, of course, output depends on the weight. So output O is not a constant, but T is. So we can ignore the first term and we've got to calculate the derivative of the second term. So the chain rule up to that point, then, if we use um, 
de du times du dw2. We end up with the expression de dw2 equals minus t minus zero, um, t minus o, and do dw2. So we've got this expression then. Now we've got to sort out the do dw2. Might have to split that up. And in this case, we're going to assume there's a there's also a sigmoid there as well. So it, output is not just directly related to the input um, by, as a linear transformation. It, it's also got a, a sigmoid in there as well. So we have to split that up. So we're going to split it up into um, do dnet3 dnet3 dw2 and the net three is going to be the intermediate linear stage before we pass it through the non-linear uh, sigmoid. And we know we've got the output. Um, it, it results from some kind of non-linear function. We're just saying that that is going to be a sigmoid. So we can actually write um, what the differential of this um, function is. So we can write do d net three, and we're just going to call it f prime net three. In the first instance. We'll substitute in later what that means for a sigmoid. And now we've just got to concentrate um, on the other term, right? D net 3 dw2. So this is just expanding it out. To, so we've got de dw2. We've, we've filled in all the values. We've put in the, the do um, d net 3. So it's now obviously minus t minus 0, uh, t minus o, uh, f prime of net. 3 and then dnet3 dw2. Now what we have to uh, tackle now is, like I said, this dnet3 dw2. But we know net3 is just a linear combination of the inputs it's getting from below, which is w2 is the weights and a2 are the inputs. right? And we know from differentiating um, wx with respect to w, we end up with x transpose. Therefore, Differentiating this expression, W2, A2, with respect to uh, W2, is going to end up with A2 transpose. Right? So it only depends on the input coming from the layer below. So we've got, um, so we get in there quite quickly now. We've got DE DW2 minus T minus O, um, F prime of net times A2 transpose. So we just need to plug in what we have for the differential now of the sigmoid. First of all, though, we know we can uh, we can write what we call the delta term, um, which is basically uh, a term which depends um, on the output layer and not not on um, what's coming in. We can write that as delta three, uh, and we're going to basically swap out this this part here. So we're going to substitute in delta three equals minus t minus o uh, f prime at net three. Into, into the expression above, and then we end up with an expression for the error gradient with respect to W2 as delta 3 A2 transpose. Now, we know, and we've done it before, that if we differentiate the sigmoid, um, we're going to end up with um, quite a simple expression. In fact, the, the gradient of this with respect to its input is going to be O multiplied by 1 minus O. Right, so we can substitute that into the delta delta term, and we end up with delta three equals minus t minus o times o times one minus o. So fully expanding that out, then we get the overall expression. If we don't want to use the delta three representation, the overall expression for how to change the weights in the second layer is given by minus t minus o. So it's the target value. Take away the output multiplied by the output, multiplied by one, take away the output, multiplied by the transpose of the activation coming in from the layer below. And if you look at this, you see this is exactly the same um, as we had for a linear network, uh, sorry, not a linear network, a one layer network, where instead now of having X transpose, which is the data coming in, we now have A2 transpose. So it's exactly the same thing, but the input to it now is just the activations coming in from the lower layer. So, layer one training. Now this is a little bit trickier. Um, again, we put in our, we've already done this, our x basically in this case has got two values. But now what we want to calculate is DEDW1. We want to know how these weights can be updated. So we need the gradient 
of the error with respect to these weights. Right. Um, in this particular case, we've got two inputs and we've got three hidden layers. Sorry, three hidden nodes, I tell a lie. Um, so in this case then, we're gonna have a matrix of this form, right? So basically, um, W is going to be um, Wx. If you look at how we multiply this together, we see um, th this has got to have three rows. So when we multiply this matrix with this matrix, Wx, we end up with three outputs corresponding to net, net two, as it turns out. Now, this particular gradient now is, is um, going to be a bit more difficult to calculate because it's actually uh, depends on um, weights in layer one, right? And it also depends on weights, weights in layer two as well. So again, we can, we can write the error down for a single pattern as half T minus O squared. Let's do the same trick before and substitute the intermediate variable u, which is just the t minus o. Um, that defines then the error as a half u squared. Now we want to calculate the gradient with respect to w1. Right, so we've got to differentiate this expression now with respect to w1. So again, we have to use the chain rule. de dw1 equals de du du dw1. So de du is easy. Right, Again, that goes to u because it's a uh, differentiate half u squared with respect to u, it goes to two u times a half, which is u. And again, that's t minus zero, uh, t minus o. And um, then we calculate uh, du dw1, which again, we can get, we look at this expression here for u, first term's a constant and the second term depends on the weights, right? So we just, like we did last time, we just write it as do dw1, and we'll come back to sorting out the details in a second. Um, so the overall derivative we're after is heading in the right direction now. de dw1 equals minus t minus o multiplied by do dw1. So we've got to split this up again, and we're going to have to do this a few times using the chain rule. So <clears throat> what we're going to do now is we're going to split it up um, in terms of um, basically an intermediate stage net three. Basically, that's going to be the linear part. So there's going to be a linear part here in the middle before we get to the nonlinear output. So we can first split it up as um, basically um, um, D, you know, do dw1 we can split it up as do d net 3 d net 3 dw1 because net because net 3 is an intermediate value between the output um, and uh, and what we want with the weights okay so again we have to substitute in um, the differential um, of a function for this so uh, do d net 3 again that's just going to be um, like we did before, it's going to be uh, the differential of the sigmoid function, so f prime net 3. And then we still start with this d net 3 d, dw1 term that we have to deal with. But we can already start writing this a bit simpler, so we're going to put in the delta term, delta 3 again like we did before. Um, again, what we need to tackle now is this, is this last term, so we've got d dw1 equals delta 3. Uh, d net 3 dw1. You don't actually have to do this substitution if you don't want to, by the way. So we've got this expression, now we've got to tackle this thing here. Um, and what we see here, we've got we've got a linear um, output, right, of the, of, of the uh, second network, but we're actually interested in differentiating with respect to the layer 1 weights, right? So we've got this output that we're looking at and we want to know how this output here net 3 changes with respect to um, the weights in the first layer right so this is a differentiating across a synapse so this is the synapse here so we've got to expand this again right we can expand it again in terms of um, an intermediate stage and we see actually a2 a2 here is also an intermediate stage so this is a value um, if we want to, if we want to calculate net three, we have to, we basically have to use a two to get there, right? So we can choose a two as an intermediate variable 
So what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate um, with respect to A2 and then differentiate A2 with respect to a W1. So using the chain rule then, D net 3 DW1 equals D net 3 DA2, DA2 DW1. And again, you can see this is just, this would cancel out so that we know that that is correct. Now, net 3 is directly linearly proportional to A2, right? So we've got this, um, this is going to be easy to calculate this term because we know that net 3, the, out, the linear output of the second layer, is just going to be its input uh, multiplied by the weight matrix. So net 3 equals W2A2. And we know what happens when we differentiate these things. We end up then, um, basically, if we differentiate that with respect to A2, we're going to get W2 transpose. Substituting back in then, um, we're getting there slowly. We're getting now DEDW1 equals delta 3 W2 transpose. Now we still start with DA2 um, DW1, right? DA2 DW1. So again, we have to use the chain rule, I'm afraid. So we have to split this up, and this, and this time we see we've got the weights as being the first thing that we're dealing with. Um, it's all going to be with respect to A2, but we see net 2 is now an intermediate value. So we can use the chain rule again, and this term at uh, this time in terms of net 2 as our intermediate variable. So we're going to see D, the AD2, uh, sorry, DA2 DW1 equals DA2 uh, D net 2, D net 2, D W 1, right? And again, you see that these terms would cancel out. So we're just splitting it up. Nice thing about net 2 is it's easy to calculate in terms of the input, right? So it's going to be just W 1 X. Therefore, D net 2, D W 1 is just going to be the transpose of X. Um, and again, we've got this um, other term. Uh, DA2, D net 2. Again, that's just our differential of our uh, sigmoid function, which we're going to put in as F prime net 2, right? So we can put in all the terms now. Um, we've substituted in this and we've substituted in this expression here. And we end up with an expression DE, DW1 equals delta 3, W2 transpose, F prime net 2, X transpose. So, actually, we end up with something which is um, which we can use as a recursive relationship now um, in order to calculate layers of, 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 of weights. So, given that we've got DE DW1 equals delta 3, W2 transpose, F prime net 2, X3, we can write this relation, re relationship now um, such that we write delta 2 is now delta 3 multiplied by um, these terms here, right? <clears throat> so then we basically end up with an expression for DEDW1 just in terms of the delta term and the input to the network, which is similar to what we were doing last time. Now, if we put in um, what the actual sigmoid is, um, we can then put in the value for um, the differential of the sigmoid with respect to net 2 as well. In this case, obviously, it's not going to be um, O, right? It's, it's going to be um, it's going to be the output of that layer. So it's going to be A2, 1 minus A2. So for the lower, um, for the lower layer, delta 2 is delta 3, W, to transpose A2, 1 minus A2, right? That's this expression here we, we're putting the things into. This leads, therefore, to the for the overall expression, if you multiply out, how do we change the weights in layer 1? And it's given by the expression minus T minus O, O, multiplied by 1 minus O, times W2 transpose, multiplied by A2, multiplied by 1 minus A2, multiplied by X transpose. So, you know, it's not completely obvious and it's not completely trivial. So here are the results then. Um, in order to get the small change, uh, make the change in, in the weights, um, basically what we have to do is calculate 
um, a scaled version of the gradients and the scaled version of the gradients depend on the delta term for that particular network layer multiplied by the input for that particular layer. This is just the general form. Um, the output delta term, right, delta 3, is minus T minus O, O, 1 minus O. Therefore, the, del uh, the, the, the change we need to make to the weights in the second layer is given by learning rate multiplied by delta 3, which is, like I said, it's the delta term um, for that layer multiplied by the input to that layer, so in this case it's A2 transpose. And the delta term for the, for the lower layer, right, we've already worked out is given by delta 3 times W2 transpose multiplied by A2, 1 minus A2. So in other words, we can write down that the change we need to make to the weights um, in layer 1, or W1, is given by the scaled version of the delta rule, sorry, the delta term for, for, for layer 1, multiplied by the input to layer 1. In this case, delta, it, the delta term is going to be delta 2, and the input is going to be x transpose, which is just the input transposed.